Welcome to the Writer Groupie Podcast. I'm Kim Smith, the writing guru, bringing you discussions, insights, and insider details on planning, producing, promoting, and profiting as a writer. This is a podcast by writers for writers. You can find out more about Writer Groupie at www.writergroupie.net. And here's the next episode of Writer Groupie. And welcome everybody to episode 73. My guest tonight is Janie Franz. Janie is the author of the Bow Dancer series and also the Ruins series or the Bow Dancer saga, I guess it is. I haven't talked to you in about a year. You'll have to refresh me on all your your series and sagas and all the stuff you've done. And, and before we get through tonight, I hope you'll tell me about what you've been up to as an author. We did decide to talk tonight about your other life. There's been so much going on with you since what we chatted uh, along about episode 38. And here we are at episode 73. I've progressed forward in the podcasting business and you've progressed forward in the writing business. So tell us what you've been up to. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is you're always such a wonderful host and oh, and I look forward to these podcasts every time I get a chance to do one. Um, I've been quite busy, um, but we'll talk a little bit what my new hat is and then we'll talk about writing in a bit. I'm the new uh acquisitions editor for Muse It Up Publishing out of Canada. And um I don't think they've ever had one who has been on site, like what I've been doing. Um, they have, um, the publisher does read the submissions and there's someone else who is the administrative assistant who, who also assists her in doing that and fielding them because we get a lot of them. But um, right now we're currently not in a submission mode. However, I was sent out in October and in November to two conventions and was able to um, talk to people who had pitches. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I would like to mention, though, right here at the beginning, if um, folks are have a finished manuscript or are just about ready to have one, Muse will be opening its submissions on February 1 to March 31, and we will be looking at dark fiction then. And then from May 1 to June 30, we'll have sci-fi and fantasy submissions. Then in August 1 to September 30, we'll be open to romance and mystery and suspense and thrillers. And then finally, at the end of the year, November 1 to December 31st, we'll look at middle grade, tween, young adult, new adult submissions. We're one of the few publishers that is handling the new adult category. And I learned a little bit about that at one of the conventions recently. So that was an interesting thing. So fabulous. It's very interesting that you got the opportunity to be an acquisitions editor. And just for the benefit of someone who might be listening to the show or watching it via YouTube, now tell us exactly what an acquisitions editor is and what you do. Well, what I do actually is twofold. Uh, because I am on site uh, oh, when I speak in, on panels and things like that, uh, I am the voice or the face of Musida Publishing. Um, as one of their f- initial authors, I feel very privileged to be in this position. But then as a acquisitions editor, what I do is I will talk with uh, new authors or even well-established authors who want to find a new publisher or a different publisher. And I will listen to their pitches, I will read some of their work, and if I think it has merit, um, either I will look at the full submission or I will give them a special email for them to send their submissions to and uh, a subject line. And so that they will get special attention, probably a little ahead of the line from others. Um, This has allowed me to establish some relationships with new authors and with uh, other authors. Um, I've been, like I say, I've been very privileged to have this opportunity because I very much respect um, 
uh, Leah Shazaz, who is our publisher. And I started with her in 2010, right after I was um, published with another publisher. But I knew Leah from um, her online writers um, conference that she used to have uh, that was free, it was done forum style. It was a wonderful learning place. I remember so not, that. I remember yes, that. That did was you a learn really wonderful opportunity for authors. Yeah, not only did you have the, the opportunity to learn about the craft of writing, but you also learned a lot about marketing and all of those things that you needed to do. And one of the things that we did um, right before I got published and because we got published was a pitch session online. So we learned how to do an elevator pitch and, and then how to field questions and that sort of thing. So um, I, I understood her um, morals as a, uh, a publisher, as a, a blogger, <clears throat> as an editor, and really appreciated her being very straightforward. And when I was getting some advice before I launched out to do our first convention as the acquisition editor, that was at Imaginarium in Kentucky, where we were together. Right. Um, I asked Leia, I said, what is, is our purpose? Uh, are we just out there, you know, uh, stalking the, the jungles of writers out there and that in trying to find something that's going to make us a million dollars? I didn't think that was her, her point. And she said, no, we'd all like to make money. And our point is that we, we want to make some money and the author wants to make some money and the cover artist wants to make some money and the editors wants to, want to make money. And it's all been this big collaborative. And she said, however, that's not our main focus. She said, you go out there and you find writers who have good stories to tell, and then we'll give them the opportunity to, have, to see that published. And currently we are doing both digital and print, and some of our new authors are getting um, print and digital at the same time. Well, Which that's is awesome. <laughs> it's, I it's, noticed it's, when I was on the Muse It Up site recently that they have got distribution to a variety of places. Uh, and oh that's really gosh. wonderful because the wider, you know, that a, an author can go with their work, I mean, the more sales they have the potential to make and oh. the better readership they have the ability to build. So I was very impressed with that. And I love the covers. The covers are delightful. Oh, all right. um, We've got some excellent cover artists, and um, the I love Coro Graphics out of um, uh, Italy because she does. She listens, and she's got talent, and she produces something really, really worthwhile and eye catching. But um, it's the dis distribution network. You're right that Leia has put into place. I mean, she has worked her her little fingers off trying to find new ways for us to get get our books out there. And this is worldwide. This isn't just a distributor here in the US. I mean, right. yeah, yes we are with Barnes and Noble, we are with Amazon, we are with, um, oh gosh, it goes on for days and days and days, um, COBOL, all of those that are here. But there are so many others that are, that are worldwide. And, um, I even heard someone recently who was one of our authors who was wanting, was approached by a f foreign publisher uh, who wanted to translate her work into another language. And I thought that's amazing because all of our stuff is English based. Um, but it's that partnership that. Um, you know, we, we really appreciate. And of course, like brick and mortar publishers, you have to participate in your own marketing. And you can't just think that, okay, once I sign a contract, um, I'm going to become a rock star. That doesn't work. You and I both know that. There's a hard work yeah, to get out there. Authors today need to realize that um, 
if you are already promoting your work, even though you maybe haven't even finished it, if you have, you know, platform building skills and you've already begun the work, that increases your chance of getting picked up by a publishing house. Oh, I so. want authors who have already begun the process of developing a platform for themselves or building a brand for themselves. It helps them. It helps them have less work to do. You can't have a brand new author with a brand new book and a brand new life out there where nobody knows anything about them. With one book, it's hard to be successful. <clears throat> and um, in, in my situation, I have 11, but I have people who who just met me, for instance, who aren't writers, who assume that I've got to be living like Stephen King. No, uh, most of us are just, you know, we work in a trade. And, you know, some of us are more successful than others. And it, it all comes down to branding and marketing and being out there. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go to conventions in the first place. It wasn't so much to sit at a table and sign books. Um, it was mainly to be on panels, to network with authors, to network with publishers, to see what what's in this world of writing and marketing that we have to do today. Mm -hmm. And... Um, <clears throat> It's been fascinating because um, Imaginarium is my favorite. I have done um, others. I, I did some small ones in North Dakota when I was with another publisher and when I just got on with Muse. I've done some um, books, big illiteracy book, book signings and that sort of thing. Um, most of those, uh, you, you do an awful lot of um, networking with authors and not a lot with the general public but Imaginarium in Kentucky just captures my heart because these are my people these are writers <laughs> like me they're hard-working writers and some of them have got 40 books some of them have got two but they're dedicated and and they go out there with their books in their trunks of their cars going to book sales and libraries and and conventions and in that whole Midwest area where um, uh, Imaginarium is in Kentucky, there are amazing things going on. And That's true. <clears throat> not far, they're, you know, two hours here, four hours there. That's not yeah. far. Um, yeah, and plenty of them all year long, but especially in the summer and fall. So, my. So, you, bro you told us you, you kind of broke the ice for us a few minutes ago talking about the pitch sessions. You have been doing pitch sessions at the conferences that you've gone to. Give us the lowdown on a pitch session. What is it and how does one prepare for it? And what are you looking for when you're in the midst of one? That's a good question. <laughs> what I did in, um, it was very different when I did them this year with Imaginarium and with Tuscon in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, totally different concepts. And it's got to be um, the hand of something greater because I was a little worried about the one in Tuscon because it started out very different. And as we talked almost like five minutes beforehand, it changed. And I'll explain that in a minute. A pitch session, we talk about an elevator pitch. If, imagine you're in an elevator with Isaac Asimov and you've got this fantastic, you know, sci-fi idea for your book and you've got to go from one floor to maybe two. You've got less than a minute sometimes. So what can you say that will tell <clears throat> author or publisher or acquisitions editor what your book is about, how long it is, um, what the main conflict is and you don't even have to know the person's name you don't have to mention that but it's very small um, now in Imaginarium I did my pitch sessions one-on-one -on -one, um, and the person would would come and tell me talk with me for I let them ramble for two or three four minutes 
And then I would start to ask questions. Well, how long is it? How, you know, do you have the first line? You know, and some of them, a couple of them had pages prepared. And what was interesting about that, a young woman said to me, well, we were told never to bring pages at con conventions because nobody wants to see them. Oh, and I wow. said, if you go for a pitch session, somebody wants to see how you write. That's and true. whether you can grab somebody on those first few pages. Um, what happened in... Oh, and let me explain what I did there. So we talked. I took pages. I got information. And... Um, Someone else brought me not only the pitch, but she had a long synopsis of the book and said, this is a longer pitch, and this is the synopsis, and I'll send you pages. Well, she emailed me pages. Um, I, unfortunately, because I've been going hither and yon, um, I'm still just now getting to do those over the Thanksgiving holiday. But I've, let, I've been in contact with the pitchers, and we... We know what's going on. Um, when I was in Tucson, I had been told that there were three of us. One person was looking for short stories for an anthology. Another one was for um, a publishing house that had been around for 10 years, but had six authors. Oh, wow. Multiple <laughs> books. But it was it was odd. Uh, but he was looking for what would make him money. Mm. Yeah. Okay, it's print publisher. Now, Muse has what did I say? Two hundred and sixty-seven authors. Wow. They've been on for six years, and many of those authors have multiple books. Um, and we cover a wide variety of genres. So I was told we were going to do Shark Tank. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, eep, eep. I was terrified. I was terrified for the pitcher. Yeah. Because I came in saying, I'm not going to do that. Um, and what was interesting is the person who pulled this together... And it was after I said I wanted to do a pitch session, he then brought in these other two people, and he says, I've been wanting to do this for decades. And that convention's been around for 46 years, I oh, think. Oh, wow. And Imaginarium has been around for three. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. And this was the first year Imaginarium did pitch sessions, and they had six publishers. Mm. Uh, wide variety of genres, okay. Um when we got set up, um, the person who was organizing this in Tucson said, okay, you're ready right now to um, uh, sign somebody. I said, no. I said, this is the beginning. It's a baby step. There are many steps on the road to publishing. And he said, oh, okay. And I said, and I want to be kind. <laughs> And he said, oh, okay. But he was so excited because he thought this was his great idea. <laughs> well, when we introduced each other, he said, this is the first time it's ever been done at a convention. <laughs> and I said, I did one at Imaginarium in last month. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, oh. And I said, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for your one-minute pitch. We're looking for one your first sentence. And the people came in with longer pitches, and we had to kind of bridle them in. And what it turned into was something so gloriously wonderful. Wow. It turned into a pitch workshop. Wow, I, that's awesome. Standing up and holding the mic and saying, you know, my book is about blah, 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 and it's so many thousand pages and or, or words and so many pages and blah, 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 blah. And boom, this is my first sentence. Sometimes it's, what's your second sentence? Yeah. <laughs> and so um, none of the other people found anything they wanted. There were six people who presented. Mm. 
I got down off of that stage at the end of the 50 minutes or so, and I gave them all my card with my personal email, and I said, send me pages. And some of them were saying, hey, that's great. Others are saying, oh, really? <laughs> and I said, yes. I said, my point here is I would like to see what you have, and if there's something worth cultivating here, we want to mentor that. Yeah. And um, when I gave my report to, and I had four people send me things, and uh, when I made my report to Leah, and uh, she said, she gave me a little caveat. She said, um, make sure your mentoring is limited because she didn't want burnout, bless her heart. And I said, yes, that we, we will make it clear that what we were doing is trying to encourage writing, good writing. Mm -hmm. And I never want to tell anybody that their writing is awful. I mean, that's like telling an, a young child that they can't do art. You know, um, they'll never want to explore that. So, um, and all of this enhances our lives. So, uh, I've had four people from the t Tucson and two from Imaginarium. So, I have a little bit of uh, work to get through. That sounds like it. You're going to have a long weekend that's going to be filled with all of your fun, favorite stuff, which is books and writing and authors. Oh, exactly. Well, what was interesting, there was a, uh, a young man um, got up, and he was so nervous. <laughs> and he, his voice was shaking, and he had to stop through the beginning of it and kind of take, you know, and, and compose himself. And I just said, breathe, just breathe. We're all friends here. <laughs> he got his pitch out. And so when he sent me his pages. He also sent me a brief bio and he said, and this is what I can do about marketing. Oh, wow. And sure. I thought, mercy, you're ahead of the game yeah. because a lot of publishers want that. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they you... ask for your bio, they ask for your book information, and they ask for your branding, your platform, your yes. a marketing plan. They want for you to write it out legitimately into a marketing That's plan, how you intend to help them to market this work. And things have really changed. I remember back in the day, it used to be right the other way around. I mean, you know, if you got... Uh, interest from a publisher, they were willing to do everything for you. And now, my George, you do everything for them. Exactly. And a lot of publishers, especially in the romance field, um, do give generous advances. Mm -hmm. But they expect you to help them sell enough books, books to cover that advance they just gave you, yeah. and then some. Listen, while I was thinking about it, what is the contract length? What uh, is Musita contracting for lengthwise? We will take, you mean the manuscript? Or no. The time, um, the time length, period? The term, term length. The contract the term. term length. It's three years. Okay. And it will automatically um, renew unless you, you know, um, talk to Leah about that and decide that either you want to pull your rights and go someplace else or self-publish or something. And a lot of, a few of our authors have done that, those at the beginning. And um, I think in a lot of small presses are trying to find themselves and some of them run into identity crises. My first publisher didn't quite know what kind of a publisher it was going to be, what kind of a house it was. And it started out as um, romance, and then it became these very, very short erotica uh, digital books that they put out, which were fine. You know, that's not what I write, but, you know, they were making some money because they were trying to find where they could make some money. Mm -hmm. And at that time, six years ago, almost seven now, that would be uh, pre Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes, it was. Um, that was where the money was. It really was. Um, That's true. I'm with you on that. Uh, 
I have seen a lot of uh, uh, publishers go from being a, a, a wide variety of genre to strictly romance, strictly the the very you know hot and spicy erotica, right. completely digital. They've gone and done a 180, and now I see them turning around and going the other way again yes, because I believe that the industry just got flooded with erotica, and it's like it did. everybody feels like they've already read it. And they probably have because there's only so many ways that you can read something, write something like that and read something like that. Um, I mean, you know, granted, there are many delights in the human body and in human sexuality. However, there's some just basic stuff that after a while it becomes yawnable, you know, True. Uh, too bad. Um, well, I don't yeah. think that everybody is going to hold it up to Fifty Shades of Grey. They feel like that that is the pinnacle, and if it doesn't stand up to that, it's not well written. And that well, can that make a publishing so. company go down quickly if uh, it gets a reputation for having poorly written books. Yeah. And the, while I'm thinking about books and talking about books, we're getting down to the last few minutes of the show, believe it or not. Janie, it takes, it just takes, we need to have like a few days to just chat. I do, too. <laughs> but I do want to give you an opportunity to talk about what you're working on now. I, I know that the Bow Dancer Saga has three books out. Is there more coming? There's three books in the Bow Dancer Saga, and it's in print. The, um, the Bow Dancer the Wayfarers Road and Warrior Women. It's all under one cover. I am so tickled to death about that. Oh, it was a box and, set. I did see that. Yes, it, there was a box set digitally, and then this is print. It's all in one. Um, there is uh, the Lost Song trilogy, which is books four, five, and six of that same series. That's supposed to come out in print next year. And oh, then gosh. I'm still, I know, trying to finish. Legacy, which is the third book in the in the Ruins trilogy, and we're going to work on actually getting the first two of the Ruins books in print um, early next year, and I'm happy about that. Um, once those are out, um, Leia said that she would work with me to try to get the two contemporaries that I have out, the one about the music industry and one about Hollywood, and. Um, I have a new series that I've started. Um, it's called the Black Holler Witch series, That's and fun. it's a, and it's about this um, eighty-year-old Tennessee herb woman who lives in well on the top of Black Holler. She's got a little cabin down there where she does her herb work, um, and she gets called to North Dakota where her uh, niece says, we're fighting a vampire out here and nothing works. Oh, boy. And you and I both know that the river, the Red River in North Dakota, flows into Lake Winnipeg in Canada. Right. It flows north. And so Aunt Sefi, my main character, says to her, well, your honey, you're dealing with contrary magic. <laughs> nothing will work except something that will that works for contrary magic. So I'm having her bring a whole bunch of her herbs and things with a whole different take on how you take down a vampire. Oh, wow. And the whole series is going to be, they're like little cozy paranormal mystery sort of, and we'll have all of the usual genre suspects. Um, and each of them will have some little thing in there about um, uh, smudging or shielding or you know, um, some little notion, but she's going to have a sidekick and, and eventually she'll be staying up there. So I had, fun. I had a friend who had a little herb shop in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And I went in before she moved into a bigger place, took photographs because that's going to be the, you know, the place okay. where all of this is going right. to. Right. That's awesome. That sounds, uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Those sound like books that I would really get into. And, you know, with my Caper Mystery series, you and I should think about doing some cross-promo stuff. Oh, that so would be you, wonderful. Yeah, once, once you get that, that series out there and kicking it, yeah. let's talk about that. Let's get together and Absolutely. have a, a confab about that because that's something that I really would like to do is to have a 
cross promo opportunity for cozy mysteries, uh, caper mysteries, and paranormal mysteries and all those sorts of yeah. things. So if you're out there writing any of this kind of stuff, you guys remember yes, this. Yes, absolutely. Because a cross promo is a wonderful way to get sales that you can't get any other way. So exactly. anyway, Janie, it has been so much fun having you on the show. It was it's delightful always. to get to see you again at Imaginarium. I don't know when our paths will cross again, but I hope it's really soon. And I want you to come back. I would love for you to come back on the show. Let's bring some books on here and let's get some book talking done let's do that absolutely thank you so much kim i appreciate thank it. you again and i'll be back and t chat with you in just a minute i'm gonna close up all the right. show but it was all good right. to talk all right thank you thank you thank you for listening to this episode of writer groupie for booking information show notes and more visit writergroupie.net